You can tell that she's really worked up because she saw the creatures as they passed. She saw the mama and when it came over again, and she's still really worked up. I can feel her behind me doing a little bit of a shake and she's like shifting side to side. So it's going to take her a little while until she calms down. We got to sort of get past this section. It's just to feel like the pack is all together again and everyone is safe. Moxie, Greg and I are riding around the world to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. We're donating 10% of roughly sales to the fundraiser and posting a new episode every week. It's a big dog on two wheels adventure for girls empowerment. So follow along and please lend your support. So we're testing out our giant loop armadillo gas bags. We have two gas bags, each with two gallons. And we're testing it out so that when we do the trek to the Arctic Ocean, we know what this feels like, or at least Greg knows what it feels like because he's the one who's carrying it all. So it seems like forever, but it really has only been about a half day or so that we have been skunked, by which I mean haven't even seen a skunk in terms of wildlife. We saw a bear when we last came from British Columbia, just on the other side of the border. And then since we got into Yukon, the only thing was me seeing a fox, kind of a cinnamon color guy. Jess scared him in the grass, kind of perked him. And then that let me see him and then he bolted off. So I just want it noted that Jess still has not seen a fox. But since then we've been skunked and we really want to see a big moose rack. So we're looking deep into the forest, just hoping for a glimpse. A grizzly sighting. A grizzly bear. Jessica sighted the shit out of a grizzly and this was a big lumbering guy. It was. It wasn't like the biggest grizzly, but it was probably like a juvenile or like a teenager type sized one. Okay, it wasn't a revenant sized grizzly, but this guy was lumbering. Yeah, and it was beautiful colored fur. Oh my god, it had like this light, like light shaggy sort shaggy, of shaggy like beige color on the top mm -hmm. and a darker uh, brown on the bottom. Yeah, and it had like this big long snout. It was just eating things and it had these huge paws and you could see that it was using its claws to like lift rocks over to see what was underneath to eat what was there. It just kept coming along. I, I have a feeling it could smell moxie because if, when it got closer to us, it kept putting his big snout up to try and sniff the air. Yeah, it was on to something. Yeah. And it just didn't give a damn about us. Like no. we were, at first we were on, on the far side of the road. Mm -hmm. And then at some point we got a little more daring and we were on the, uh, the like close side yeah. of the road. And, and he just kept walking towards me. I think there was one spot where you were like, Greg! And I, I kind of like... <laughs> Did a momentary freak because as much as I'm looking at the bear through the camera, it's like, well, maybe you're seeing something that I'm not seeing, you know, even though I'm seeing it. emptied our tanks. We're on the light now, which means it's time to complete the gas bag test by actually using the gas bag to fill up the gas tank. I'm sure if I do anything incorrect or, or miss any steps, uh, I will get a unpleasant note from Giant Loop <laughs> saying you're fucking misrepresenting. Right, now the key, I think, is to not fucking spill. And I do it. There we go. It's all about getting the hose into the hole. Put it into the hole and then get it. never top up your tank. How <laughs> are you gonna close that? <laughs> Got a little away from me there at the end. Keep any and all open flames away from my bike. Hey Schnout. Alright, moopers. Put out your cigs. No smoking or vaping here, Moxie. Aaron. falling into the shot and refocusing it. <laughs> Aaron makeup. If you like what we're doing, here's how you can support the Go Roughly Around the World adventure. You can donate to our Girl Up fundraiser, become a Patreon supporter, purchase Roughly gear for your dog and everyone you know, and of course, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, and now back to the adventure. Tell me, baby, where are you going? Prairie. 
I'm employing a bag roll up at the end technique to try to get everything out of the bag as much as possible. Tell me, babe, what are we gonna do? You got me in the bag, It's well after six o'clock, but since the sun doesn't set until one, two o'clock, just sort of for a moment, then can you really call this like the evening? It's not even the evening yet. This is mid-afternoon. We're taking a quick break. Jess is fishing and we've come to this like pullout that's just by this sort of lagoonish lake. Moxie is going batshit crazy from all the uh, mosquitoes and these buzzards and things that she's just snapping at. She's just snapping at them. And it always surprises me that she doesn't bite her tongue when she does that snapping. But she doesn't, or at least she doesn't to make who about it. Shit. Bird almost just landed on me. There you go. How spectacular is that? Yeah, I don't understand. It. They're wild birds and they were eating from our hand. I, I, just, I just don't get it. Whoa! <laughs> Coolest thing ever! He's on my camera pole. Do they like train them to do it out here in the pond? <laughs> what? He was like really yanking at it. Probably gonna peck into my hand. <laughs> and they're wild. It's like they're not. You wanna try. It's like they're, they're wild birds. It's like they're not afraid of us. I don't really understand. Yeah, you'd think that they come here like it, like this is like Central Park or something. They're just accustomed to it. He's just collecting it. Yeah, must be taking it to his babies. To the nest, yeah. He's a hard pecker, so make sure you've got a good grip. You know what it is? What? They like the uh, jalapeno and cheddar. I mean, if this was just like a sourdough or a wheat, forget it. We are probably about 40 to 50 kilometers from the Alaska border. So we're probably gonna, gonna cross this evening because I think it's a 24 hour border. And that's where we'll camp tonight. We're pushing on into the evening, not only because we can, but also because the weather has actually just been fantastic today, contrary to all pronostications. And tomorrow is supposed to be rain. Take me to We are just about a dozen kilometers into Alaska from the Yukon border and we found this recreation site that is empty. There's nobody here. It's got this beautiful grassy area. There's no sign anywhere that says camping, but more importantly, there's no sign that says no camping. And so we are camping. Huge, huge bonus to this site. Lots and lots of firewood, freshly chopped. And Jess is putting up the tent. Moxie has already taken a shit, so she's good. She's basically doing exactly what she's supposed to do. This is an El Pastor type soy fake meat. <laughs> We're using this as sort of our meat substitute with the rice that it wants to be made. We didn't have a chance to go get vegetables today, so this is what dinner is going to be. And there's no sense that, like, there's any problem. But the good thing is, it's already, like, 8.30, 9 o'clock, so the chances of a ranger coming is very low. And if a ranger does come and does uh, exit us from the premises, it's not going to be dark. Not exactly sure what we were thinking. Greg was saying, oh, let's camp on the nice grassy area. So see that nice patch? 
that is dry now, that was where our tent was. See everything else around it? It was wet. And just over here, there was a whole gazebo. And so we brought the tent over here to dry before we put it away because it was soaked. If we had only just stayed here last night, uh, everything would have been dry. It's been raining for days now, been running like a child. Can't feel the cold, but I'm lost here with you, lost in the woods. Lost as I should. How old are you, Moxie? Five. Showing a little gray. Yeah, it's not got too a little, bad. Little gray in her, in her beard, just like right? the rest of Wisdom us. whiskers. Yeah. You started out in Guatemala. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's a hell of a ride. How are you doing today? Good. How are All right. you? How's it going? Good. We got from. Uh, we're coming up from Guatemala. Wow, that's just quite the drive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't quite have that many miles on. I just started in northeastern Nevada. But my first 300 miles was nothing but dirt. Up on the pegs for 300 miles. Well, you be ready for the uh, Dalton, I guess, huh? Exactly. How long is the stretch? This stretch goes, for, uh, you mean to have construction? Yeah. Uh, about, uh, about a mile and a half, two miles. Oh, okay. A few weeks back, we noticed that after after dismounting from a normal stretch of about an hour and a half, two hour ride, Moxie was limping a little bit. We, we always worry about her hips as a shepherd. We always worry about her spine because she uh, is about a year out from a spinal stenosis surgery that is a condition that can always reemerge. Practically, it consisted in that she removes the lamina vertebral que hay entre L7 y S1, o sea, la última vértebra lumbar y el inicio del hueso saco, ¿no? que es justamente el área donde en tomografía ya se veía una inestabilidad lumbosaca con estenosis del canal y algo de, de fibrosis alrededor, que estaba prácticamente comprimiendo las fibras nerviosas que, que están en esa parte y dan mucho dolor. Se logró quitar esa, esa fibrosis, incluso se logró quitar parte del disco intervertebral que está abajo para terminar de, de descomprimir casi casi al 100% diría yo. And we're watching her and seeing how she's favoring one of her her hind legs and then it occurred to me I think she's pulled a muscle. And we started kind of replaying the situation and that's what it is. She has been laying down comfortable and calm after an hour and a half, maybe 2 hours or more of riding continuously. Her muscles were not warm, and we let her up and immediately jumped down without even fully standing up. Take a moment, keep them there, and massage the hind quarters a little bit. We have been on a moose hunt all morning, which is to say we've been looking for moose because that's one of the animals that has evaded us, one yeah. of the wildlife. Yeah. Uh, that and, and the caribou. Yeah, and like you've been doing a good job like looking on the right side of the road, and then I look on the left side of the road, uh, as we're going by. I don't know if I'm doing a good job because I haven't seen anything. I don't know, but, but you're I'm saying that it. you're like looking into the forest. Yeah, I'm but, like but trying the ones, to penetrate. Yeah, but the ones that we've been seeing have really just sort of been in the gully area. At least the bears have been. So I'm, that's what I'm looking at. So I'm probably looking like right past them. <laughs> right through the right through their horn, their, their like rack um, in and past them. But I think that the moose are probably right at the tree line. You were channeling some recent fishing experiences of getting snagged underwater <laughs> when you asked me earlier, how do you think that the moose get through the forest? Such a well, dense, when it's a dense, dense forest. forest, they must get they... like caught on things all yeah. the time. <laughs> so then the rest of the time I'm imagining the moose like just getting its rack caught from one branch to the other, spending the whole morning getting itself, its rack freed from the branches. It gets to the clearing by the road there and immediately a car goes by and scares it back and it was like, fuck this, all right? Maybe I'll try again this afternoon. <laughs> this is not worth it. Well, I think that they're probably more in like these open areas or opening 
I don't know. Yeah, so that's why whenever you pull off for a rest break, don't use the rest stops. It's nice that they have the little bathroom there and the little <laughs> bear box trash, but it's way nicer if you pull off the main highway onto some sort of like gravel dirt area and clearing, and then maybe you'll catch a wildlife spotting. Maybe. We're hoping. We just had a moose sighting. A double moose sighting. A mama double. and its little baby. And it was a moose crossing the road situation. Yeah, so it, it crossed and Greg wasn't saying anything. He just sort of like did this intake of breath. My, my speaker broke down. And then it, it crossed over with its baby onto the other side. And then Greg stopped and went to go and follow to see if he can get some video of them. Uh, got a little bit, but they ran away and then the mama came back out and I was able to She just stood there on the other side of the road and I could see her and then she crossed just slow as ever across the road uh, To the other side she just left Her baby on the other side though because I haven't seen it cross yet How do you feel like Moxie handled our first oh, I, encounter? She was squirming. She was crying. She was shaking behind me You can tell that she's really worked up because she saw Greg go she saw the creatures as they passed. She saw the mama and when it came over again, and she's still really worked up. I can feel her behind me doing a little bit of a shake and she's like shifting side to side. So it's gonna take her a little while until she calms down. We gotta sort of get past this section uh, and she has to feel like the pack is all together again and everyone is safe. This whole stretch here is just long and flat and straight, which meant we were enjoying some really quality time with our Atlas throttle lock. So when all of a sudden I see this mama and baby moose crossing the road, so I hit my brake, then realized that my throttle lock was still on, disengaged my throttle lock, hit the brake, and the whole time my speaker was non-functional. I could not utter words. He didn't say anything until they were basically off the side of the road. I didn't even notice because they crossed right in front of Greg and he was sort of blocking the view. And then I look up and I see them as they pass. So the little baby moose decided to try and cross right when a car was coming. And luckily the car just scared it and it ran back. And then when it was clear, little moose crossed and, and crossed way up there. And we saw the mama that was right over here and they must be meeting somewhere along the way so they can get together. That was a bit scary because like, I was like, oh no, to the car, but the car didn't see me or whatever and just kept driving. Poor little moose was like right up to the to the edge of the road but nothing happened moosey was able to cross over and it probably is being reunited with its mama right now yesterday it was the gas bags that we were testing out on top of the panniers and it was an enormous success i mean nobody loves the extra weight but it worked really well in adverse circumstances and we have somebody who is getting a kick out of jess and moxie so any random given time and so today is about groceries so we are going to be in fairbanks in a cabin for about uh five days we get an extra couple of days this week that we've worked out so that we can have a little bit of rest and get ahead on some work and so forth so we've done some shopping because the cabin wasn't ready when we came in. Jess's cases are full to the brim. My cases are full to the brim. We've got stuff on top of one pannier. We have booze and fruits and veg on top of the other pannier. And we even have a pizza. And we have 
and this is just this is terrible on jazz but we have a bag of chips. of chips, chips for chips and salsa right here stuffed in so this is happening and as long as i don't go down i think everything's gonna make it back safely So basically, we're all in this together. Either we all get to the cabin, or none of us do. <laughs> the water that comes out of the tap here in the kitchen is fed by a 50 gallon tank that's sitting up in the loft. And it's basically half full. So it looks like I guess we have 25 gallons of water to use for the time that we're here, which is about five days. This is the outhouse for the dry cabin. So basically you come out here and you do your business. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. Our moose watch has finally paid off. We got to see our first moose, a mama and its calf. It was an absolute dream to actually see this. We've been waiting for it for a long time. Basically, since we were in Prince George, when we talked with Chantel, you'll remember from a previous episode, and she was telling us that you can come across a moose that's just laying there in the road and the cars are waiting. And we were just like, really, does that actually happen? And she was saying that, yeah, they just come up from the sides of the road just really quickly. And then there they are. And I didn't, I didn't really believe it because I hadn't seen it. And now this time, like when the mama just came up on the road like that, she came really quickly. Um, so I can see why there are all of these signs about being careful for wildlife and, and watching out when you're riding or driving. But luckily nothing happened to the moose or her calf and we got a chance to really see them up close. And Moxie, like normal, she got really excited about it and wanted to go for it. But I think what, what this sort of reminds us is that we need to just be careful when we're, we're riding, uh, always scanning and looking to see and for us, it's like a bit of a game because we both like to see the wildlife and see who can see a creature first. I like to look on the left side and Greg will look on the right side. If we see something, we're talking through the communicators. Oh, look, there's something, or maybe there's something. And we've gotten to the point where points are now are taken away if you have a false sighting. So I've had a few points taken away when I see something that looks shaded that I thought, oh, maybe that could be a bear. No, it wasn't. And I sort of uh, cried wolf in that sense. Uh, but it's a, it's a fun game that we have. It keeps things interesting as we're riding through and always keeps us scanning and looking to make sure that um, there's nothing coming out on the road where we'd have to do like a quick emergency stop. When it comes to wild camping, in the States and in Canada, they've got different terms for the type of camping that you can do. So the States obviously has their BLM land, Canada has Crown land. And in the States, we talk a lot about dispersed camping. And that basically is areas where you're free to camp, uh, but they don't have anything really set up for you. There aren't really picnic tables, there aren't toilets, stuff like that. Um, but it's an area that you're allowed to camp in. In Canada, one cool thing that we found that if if it's a situation where it's either like getting dark or we're really struggling to fi find a place to wild camp, we will look on the map for recreation sites. In Canada, recreation sites, you are able to camp. Like what we've noticed is there are a lot of RVers um, and there are, are facilities there. Normally there are picnic tables and there are toilets. But in uh, at these at dispersed campsites, they're just a little bit more established. So that we've come into that situation where it has gotten late and we're like, well, I don't know, we're not really finding anything. We find a rec site, we are able to just pull up there, we can pop our tent, we can do whatever we want to do, but it's not really like an established place. It's more dispersed camping um, with a few amenities. And I feel like that's a really great way to go if maybe you're uncomfortable with doing wild camping and just sort of pulling off uh, into an area and setting up your tent and you want just a little bit more structure to your camping, uh, a, a recreation site in Canada, it's a good way to go. Greg was our gear mule again. He was carrying all of the fuel before in the armadillo gas bags. And this time when we went shopping, all of the groceries and everything went on his bike. He's got some additional capacity to carry things, let's say, as much as he doesn't love the fact that he looks a bit like a circus with all of these things hanging off of his bike, but he does have the ability when we need it um, to add to his load. He already is carrying all of our camping gear 
and all of his own stuff. He does have some tools as well. So he is fully loaded. But then when we go shopping, especially if we know we're going to be camping for a few days straight, I want to make sure that we have enough food uh, and water as well uh, when we're going to those sites. So when we're shopping, I do sometimes shop and get a little bit more than maybe what is necessary. Uh, but Greg is able to accommodate it. I do get some comments where people are asking, like, are you going alone? Like, or like, but you said you were going alone. And I see these images and photos and videos of, of this guy go, that's going along with you. Yes, that guy is my husband. And we are traveling together with our dog as a pack. And that's the really cool thing about it, because it's not just that I'm doing this alone with Moxie uh, and we're, we're going around the world. We're doing this as a team because we are roughly the brand, the business, and we are taking that on the road. So it's a bit different than if you're, you're just sort of traveling for traveling sake and wanting to see things. But we also have to manage our business while we're traveling. So having my business partner there and being able to talk over the communicators and strategize and think things through. Uh, and then actually when we get to the three days that we're working, we can, we can put things into practice. That's really important to us. So yes, can I do it alone? Yes. Have I done it alone? Yes. I have traveled alone with Moxie many times. But the, the benefit of having Greg is, one, not only the additional capacity that he brings along, which is, for me, it's the additional camping gear that he's carrying. That's the one thing that I'm not carrying by having Moxie on the back. Um, so I could definitely do the trip without Greg, but I just wouldn't be able to camp. Um, or I could, but I'd have to get different camp gear that would be just for one person or for me and Moxie. Um, and that would be small enough that I could strap on to either the outside of the cockpit or on top of my pannier lids, um, or to fill up maybe more of my pannier, uh, tank pannier pockets. So there are those options, but I enjoy this idea that we are traveling as a pack, as a family, and it really brings a lot to the experience. And so, yes, I love having my whole family with me as we travel. And I think that that's one of the great things about traveling with your dog. If, you, if you're a single person and you wanna travel with your dog, that's great. If you're single, if you're a couple and you have your dog, well, then it's great if you're able to go all together. And that's what we're doing. And I think that it is fantastic. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you love the videos that we're creating, our Go Roughly Around the World video series, please come on over to Patreon and provide your support. We would really appreciate it. Uh, the link is down in the bio. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Go Roughly. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.